Today on Good Morning BSN, we shall be discussing a very interesting topic. We shall be discussing the topic, what if our boss is the problem? And we will be looking at how executives can support their CEOs to perform better. This topic explores part of performance leadership, which is one of the four pillars of great leadership that we at BSN believe are crucial to making a difference in your organization and in your world. We are so glad today to have two amazing guests to help us talk about what if the boss is the problem. And it's interesting because many of the people dialing into this call, into this uh, program today are actually bosses. So what if we are the problems uh, of our organization? We're so glad to have Joseph Gonwe and Egwano Obie with us to explore this topic. Uh, Joseph is our presenter for today. He's an accomplished transformative business leader and he's currently the chief of people and culture at the Bank of Kigali PLC. Bank of Kigali is Rwanda's oldest and Rwanda's biggest bank. Uh, Joseph brings decades of experience working across finance, telecommunications and tech companies and he's been, of course, managing uh, an organization's most vital resource, the human capital. Joseph, it's a pleasure to welcome on the show. Egwano, our director for today, is a BSN alumnus who originally started her career as a pharmacist, but transitioned into people development and learning. Egwano is bringing her many years of experience here as well to help us explore this topic further. Egwano, welcome. It's my pleasure to welcome both of you to BSN. Joseph, over to thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Doc. Uh, thank you for having me on your program. I'm really grateful that uh, I could be part of this uh, team and be able to discuss important issues that affect our well-being at work. And, um, really looking forward to listening to all of you and also. Uh, getting some questions and seeing how we can have, you know, an interchange encouragement as well as, uh, you know, insights uh, with regards to to, uh, to how we manage, especially up, including downwards. So this is a very interesting topic. Uh, what if our boss is the problem? You know, what if our boss is bad and wrong? <laughs> and uh, how we can support, you know, the CEOs to perform better. So considering that most of us, who are on this core are bosses, and we also report to a boss. Let's try and see how we can help ourselves so that we can become as effective as we can in terms of how we engage upwards and also how we support people that are below us. I like to call them performance partners, so to speak. So to begin with, I think all of us here on the core uh, do understand that Seriously, toxic managers can really set you back in terms of your career um, and also just life in general. And uh, all of us, I think, have some understanding that almost 80% of people that quit uh, jobs, most of the time they are leaving an organization because of a bad manager, so to speak. There's also a popular word that came uh, for, the past, uh, for the past few years that is quite quitting. Well, we have lots, lots of people in the organization, they are working under a bad boss, but they're sort of like just getting by, just getting things done and so on. And they just, you know, and it, it's called quite quitting and so on. So in this session, I want us to talk about things we're in control of, you know, things that, that we are absolutely in control of. And because you and I know that Oftentimes, sometimes we are absolutely not in control of how somebody is going to behave or someone the way they will speak to us, but we want to talk to things that we are absolutely in control of. And when we do that, that helps us to get our head right, our head clear, and we are ready to engage that manager or that CEO that is, is, is behaving really badly. So let's try and take a step back and look at, at, at three factors that are very crucial when it comes to handling these high stakes related issues. Now, number one, we need to realize that um, we need to realize as to how we form our personal reality. You know, our personal reality is, is a state of being, so to speak. 
So it's 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 built up by the way we think, by the way we feel, and the way we react to things. That is what makes up our state of being, and our state of being makes our personal reality. So try and really pay attention, please, especially if you're in a very toxic environment or in a toxic relationship with your line manager, or you can or you can see or you witnessed somebody who is who is in a very toxic relationship. So what are we saying? So number one is you have to really have to be very conscious in terms of the way you act, the way you think, and the way you feel, because this becomes a, 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 an area that can generate a lot of stress, a lot of anxiety, and a lot of anger. So at this moment, when you are in this state, just try and be conscious of your state of being your personal reality that you're creating. And in most cases, we will end up creating this personal reality where we can tell, we can see things, we can feel things, and we end up creating our own downward spiral. That is to say, I know my manager is not gonna like this. I know he's bad and wrong. And I know this is how he's going to react. This is how it affects me. And we create our we, that creates our own downward spiral in the sense that we become less and less effective and uh, we now pollute, so to speak, with our manager in terms of sometimes abusing us. So the second factor is that I want us to really pay attention to is, and I learned this one from a guy called Joseph Granny, who's been my all-time mentor for, uh, for, for, for the longest time. So this is what we coined, and this is what he says. He says, anytime you find yourself stuck, very often what is keeping you stuck is that you are not holding on to the right sort of conversation. So think about a time when you were stuck in your career. What is it that made you stuck? Very often, you are not really talking. You are not engaging in the right sort of conversation. But when you step up to this conversation, you find that you get unstuck. But there's a science as to how you need to step up and handle this, this, this tough conversation, so to speak. And the third one that I would like to share with you is... Joseph, sorry, um, sorry to interrupt. Just wanted to confirm about the slides. Are we going to see the slides from you or... Because we're not yes, seeing yes, yet. yes. Um, I think I'm going to go to slide number two very soon. So uh, let me now open up slide number three. So slide number three, if it can be projected... Slide number three. Um, yes, slide number three, please. Slide number two. Let's go to slide number two. Uh -huh. So the third element that we have to be really, really mindful is how to pay attention to the three clever stories. Like I indicated in the beginning, there is the boss, there is us. So step number one is how do you focus on yourself first? And I like to call this as focus on me first, then us second. And as you do that, you have to be mindful to these three clever stories. And I'll share with you where I learned about these three clever stories. And having had some experience of almost closer to two decades of work experience, I have seen this, I have felt this, and I've also helped as many people as possible when it comes to mastering these three clever stories. Now, what are these three clever stories? Number one is the victim story. Number two is the villain story. Number three is the helpless story. Now, what do these stories mention? What, what, what do these stories um, refer to? So when you look at these stories, one thing that you will realize is that um, when it comes to, to a victim story, this is at a point when you start really looking at yourself as being a victim in a work environment. Now, if you are a victim, you are really telling yourself, look, in this situation where I am, uh, my boss is so difficult to manage and, uh, and you start turning into sort of what I refer to as self-pity. You know, you're, you're pitiful, you have no control, you feel that you're a victim, you're being mistreated, your boss is, is, is bad and wrong, and, um, and all these things that are happening are completely out of your control. 
And therefore, when you start telling yourself these stories in your mind, remember what we said at the beginning. We said um, how you create your own personal reality is as a result of your state of being, how you think, how you feel, and how you act. So if you start telling yourself that I'm a victim, you will not bring out the best out of you. So remember, we are saying, work on me first. Then the second story is the, is the villain story. So in terms of the villain story at this point, sorry, can you can you hear me? It looks like I'm having net, uh, connectivity challenges. I can hear you now. Can you hear me now? Yes, yes you can. Okay, perfect. So in terms of the villain story, in terms of the villain story, so you, the villain story is you are now dehumanizing your boss. So your boss, is really bad and wrong. And when you look at them, every time they walk in, just picture this, you're seeing someone with horns like this. You know, it can have a shocking impact. So you are dehumanizing them. You are calling them all sorts of names. And then you are telling yourself, you know, uh, this person is so really, really evil and they're so bad that they are really causing stress. So a villain is, is, is literally... What you are doing at this point, you are dehumanizing a human being. As looking at them as, you know, <laughs> you know, a long time ago, I used to work with uh, someone and uh, she was she was at a very senior level. She was the chief sales and distribution officer. And we used to share an office. And now what happened is that uh, whenever the CEO comes in, whenever he drives in, just looking at the car, she would go into, she would have a shock. And this time she comes to me and she say, you know what, Joseph, I would like to knock off because I'm having tummy problems. And I tried to dig a little bit and say, what's really going on? And said, you know what, just looking at this guy's car, it just shocked me and, uh, and, and I ended up having a stomach problem. So I'm taking a day off and I'm going to knock off. So the question is, have you heard those stories where when you see your boss, you have some shockwaves that are sent to you, some very bad vibes that can create an emotional stress. And if not carefully handled, they start affecting your health. Now let's come to the, to the last story. The last story is the helpless story. The last, the, the last story is that I am helpless. This guy has all the powers. He will say, he will do, he will talk to me however he wants. And uh, I am just completely helpless. So if you look at these stories, you become a victim. You start looking at, you start dehumanizing this human being. And then second, you start feeling serious sense of helplessness that there's nothing you can do about the situation. And if you are in this state, definitely you will not get the best out of you. And uh, you are really creating a, a bad downward spiral for yourself. So the point is watch out for these clever stories when they start to when they start affecting your well-being, then you know that there is a problem. So what do you do? So let's go to the next slide. Let's look at the next slide, please. Go on the next slide. Okay, perfect. We are on so the on the next, next slide. slide. Okay, perfect. So when you are on the next slide, so now, the next thing that you do, if this is what you're going through, you now need to, how do you, how do you deconstruct these clever stories, so to speak? You know, how do you ensure that you move away from these limiting narratives that you're telling yourself? So the point is work towards shifting your perspective to one that is more empowering, one is that one is that what is which is more accountable, you know, where you, and and where you 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 you're looking at yourself as a problem solver, and as a productive individual, and you get your heart right and you're ready to engage in a dialogue. Now, engaging in a dialogue, how do you tell the whole story? So, number one, how do you turn from being a victim into an actor? So, the, these are the questions that I try to to think of. The point is, what am I pretending not to notice about my role in the problem? Remember the concept that we are looking at is work on me first as second. 
So if you are feeling like a victim, the first thing is, what am I pretending not to be noticing about my role in the problem? So most of the time, when the boss is behaving in a manner that they are behaving, oftentimes there is, we've contributed to that. So in, in these situations, most of the time, we it's very easy for us to blind ourselves and to look at our boss as he's bad and wrong, he's a, he's, he's, he's a villain and so on. But oftentimes, if you really look at the issues at hand, you realize that you've got a share in that problem. So the question that you should be asking yourself is, what am I pretending not to be noting about my role in this problem? When you do that, you start feeling, you start, you start, you, you start regulating your own feelings in terms of the way you feel about your boss to say, you know what, it could be this, it could be that. Could have contributed, I could have not submitted the report or my report had issues and hence, you know, you start softening yourself. The second one is how to turn a villain into a human. So here, the question that you ask yourself, and we couched this with a guy called Joseph Granny when we were running a culture transformation program, which was a huge one in uh, in, in 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 MTN as as I worked as a culture transformation uh, uh, person. So here, the question is, why would a reasonable, rational, decent person do this? Why are they doing this? You know, like. Ask yourself, why is this person saying that what they are saying to me? Why are they behaving the way they are behaving towards me? You know, why would a reasonable, rational, decent human being do this? You know, you are, you are now humanizing. Instead of dehumanizing this person, you are now humanizing them. When you ask this question three times to your mind, you will find out that this person is acting towards me because of you will come up with reason. It could be this, it could be that. So these are helping you to soften your emotions. Now, how do you turn yourself from being helpless into being able? Now, at this point, this is a crucial moment. This is a crucial moment that you need to get, that you need to help yourself in order for you to get your heart right and to get your head clear. So the question is, what do I really want? What do I really want what do I really want for others? What do I really want for my boss? What do I really want for myself? What do I really want for this company? What do I want for our relationship? What, what do I really, what, what are the results? So here, the point we are saying, focus on the results. Focus on what is important, and those are the results. The results that I want is that I want to have a very good relationship with my boss, I want to have mutual respect with my boss, and uh, I also want to deliver. So if this is the point, what am I pretending not to be doing? So you ask yourself what I want. If, if you're very clear in terms of what you want, it becomes easy for you now to start engaging. So let's go to the, to the, to the other slide now, to the, to the, to the fifth slide. Uh, so well, when you Joseph, ask Joseph, yourself... Sorry again to, to interrupt. So we, we're, we're out of time, so please help to wrap up. Thank you. Okay, so the last slide, let's go to the last slide. So in the last slide, you are now ready to get into this conversation. Now, in this conversation, uh, we call it set your path. Now, in this conversation, when you need to handle this controversial topic, you are now ready to talk to your line manager. You make sure that you prepare yourself. At this point, make sure you're documenting the facts. When you are telling your story, avoid being technical. Avoid, avoid being emotional and uh, avoid showing signs of a victim or villain or helpless story. You tell your story as is. And then ask your manager, I have noticed the following things that you're doing and that you're saying, and these are affecting me. And uh, what do you think? Am I really, and I noticed that there's a pattern of behavior on this day. You said this, you did this. And, um, and I'm just thinking, and I'm wondering, uh, can we talk about this? And as you speak, make sure that you speak tentatively. You don't sound, you don't hold court to your boss. You know, you don't, you don't sound with sound like you're these are serious accusations. And encourage them to speak. So uh, in that manner, remember that at this point, speak in such a way that you're respectful, you're supportive, but you're candid with the issues that are at hand. Then let's go to the last slide now. If you go to the last slide. This was, At this, the point, this was the last slide. Okay. 
Okay, so um, the, 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 the last slide is now this point where we're saying take responsibility. So at this point, you make sure that you take responsibility of your flaws, make sure that you stay professional and deliver on your results. Do not resent or resemble your voice, your boss. You know, avoid fixing them. You cannot fix your boss. That's one thing that you need to understand. So understand their, this brings me to my third point, understand their perspective. Is it that they are stressful? Is it that is it an issue of lack of communication or is it something else? Try to, to understand them. It becomes so easy when you try to understand your boss. It beca you become empathetic towards as to how they are behaving and it will show. Try and communicate effectively and focus on your work. Don't let this distract you. Stay focused on your task. Make sure that um, you, know, you perform to your best of your ability and seek clarity as much as you can. You know, seek support from some mature individuals and, you know, go and don't go and broadcast and talk to almost anyone about how bad and wrong your boss is, because in one way or the other, it will get your boss. And then just to make sure that you're very clear, please ensure that when you know this, that this is getting worse, document everything. Keep a record of these incidents. You might need this. This is where I'll end. And uh, I would like to uh, hand over to you back. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Joseph. Uh, amazing stuff. I actually was writing quite a few a few things. Thank you so much. And we're going to take questions after we have a reflection from Egwana. Egwana, I'm going to please ask you to make your reflections a bit shorter than, 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 than normal, if you can, uh, okay. because we're a little bit out of time. <laughs> but please, if you have questions, feel free to type your questions in, and we'll take your questions afterwards. Uh, Egwana? Awesome. Thank you so much. Can you hear me clearly? Yes, we can. Awesome. Thank you very much, Joseph, for that. Um, you know, quite an expository one in a short time. What if our boss is the problem? And the first thing when I reflect upon it is, whose perception is this? Is it my perception that the boss is the problem? Or is it real that the boss is really the problem? So uh, for one, I will definitely sit to think and say, what's the evidence that the boss is the problem? Because sometimes, like Joseph was mentioning, and a very powerful point there, you have a certain perception of the challenge that you're faced with, and the boss is also thinking something. What are they thinking? Both, thing, both thoughts are in the dark. Can I begin to think about what the boss is thinking as making the boss act out the way that they're acting? Or maybe this has become a practice. It's something they do all the time. Do all the time. Interestingly, I think bosses are kind, kind of lonely in the sense that people don't give them enough feedback. And so if you notice that this is something that's making the job or the business or the goal that we have not to get to where we want to get it to, the boss is the one in the way, then having that opportunity to respectfully um, discuss the situation and see how the boss can be of help to make sure that we can all get to our goal. Because at the end of the day, together, everyone achieves more. If I can see the picture, understand the problem, like Albert Einstein would say, enough to be able to have a conversation around it, boldly or courageously have a conversation around it, then chances are that we can all meet our goal, which is a common goal. And so upon reflect, I mean, reflecting upon, you know, the, the, the topic on the table, I think about it and I say, sometimes really the boss could be the problem, but then managing upwards becomes extremely critical. How do I manage? So I asked myself a few questions. What do I need to do to engage in the dialogue that's necessary to move things forward? What do I really want to achieve? Do I need to shift my perspective? Do I need to be more empathetic to the boss? What are they challenged with? What are they having to deal with? How can I be a problem solver to the challenge that the boss is facing so that they can be more comfortable to be less of a problem to the goal that we have in mind? I mean, so these are some questions that come to mind for me. Of course, I also want to consider the evidence in front of me. What's the evidence for which I say that the boss is the problem? Are there facts? If there are, what can we do about it? What can I do about it? It was within my circle of control, like Joseph had mentioned. You know, how do I stay clear in my head, make sure my head is right so that I can engage adequately? I think that one big thing that comes out of this upon my, my reflection is the power to communicate. Communicate, 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 because that becomes extremely critical. Communicate with the people beneath me communicate with the boss above me so managing upwards um downwards and you know horizontally becomes extremely critical to be able to help so i said i'd wrap up by saying that 
I really love when you said, Joseph, avoid fixing your boss and respectfully engage. I speak tentatively, but definitely that which must be said must be said, and it must be said in a way that enables us to move forward to our goal. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank you, Egwana. Thank you for, for your short, but very insightful reflections. Indeed, we are turning the problem on its head. Uh, what if I am the problem? I think the boss is the problem, but perhaps I might be the, a part of the problem, thinking that the boss is the problem. The floor is now open for questions, uh, everyone. Uh, I see there's a comment or question from John Loder. Uh, John says 11% uh, of global employees at, are at home with a burnout. 11%, wow. 87% of global employees and managers are disengaged. And this is from Gallup 2023. And John asks, is this a result of toxic uh, or uh, uh, management or of mismanagement, uh, uh, toxic management or mismanagement. Um, Joseph? Sorry, I lost you a bit. You're saying is the last question is what? Is this the one? So is it because of toxic management or mixed management? 11% uh, of global employees are at home with burnout. 87% of global employees and managers are disengaged. Is toxic management causing this or is this mismanagement? Is it toxicity or just managers not being able to manage it effectively? I would say it's both. I would actually say it's both. So the, the, the toxicity of a manager can really derail you, you know, in many ways, in many ways that it, it, it really begins to affect you. And then also on the other side, uh, in terms of um, uh, the environment that the managers create, uh, you will find that, you know, this this becomes this becomes becomes a huge challenge in the way you engage in the way you relate and the results that matters and especially even the relationships that matters the most so i would say it's both thank you joseph so the toxic toxic management and mismanagement so managers sometimes they don't know what to do and then sometimes managers may just be evil with the horns <laughs> like you described <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I have a question and uh, please everyone, please feel free to type in your questions. If you have questions, please type them in the chat box and we will read the questions. You talked about communication, Joseph, and, and Egwana also talked about it. And I'd like to hear from you. Suppose the boss can't be approached. Suppose the boss is unapproachable. Some bosses are, you come in to say, I want to have a chat with you and they're like, get out of my office. You know, that, that, that sort of thing. You know, suppose, suppose we have that kind of boss that can be approached. I can't even talk to them. You know what, what do I do? Yeah, I I, th I think first of all, timing is t timing is everything. So first of all, if you have a boss like that, like we said, work on yourself first, then go to your boss. But timing is everything. Timing is everything. Sometimes, like we say, try 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 to really understand your boss. Are they stressed? If somebody comes to you at a moment when you are not at your best. You find that uh, you know they will get they will get the 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 um uh you know yeah so 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 timing so you 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 want to ensure that you understand your boss you approach them in such a way that you're respectful but at the same time you need to be firm you really need to be firm you need to look around and say you know what um, I I know that can you allow me to have a chat where I can I really want to speak to you you have to be tactful yet firm ensure that you get that time that is needed and uh, with your boss and the boss owes you that time it's 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 very important that you demand for that time you have to be firm you have to be tactical and you make sure that you know that that happens but time is everything and try and empathize with what your boss might be going through thank you so much timing is everything thank you about timing uh, i see questions from bosses Two of the bosses in, <laughs> in business school, Netherlands, are asking questions. <laughs> so obviously this is getting old. One from Tuan van der Hovel, our dean in business school, Netherlands. He says, are you not out of place if you can't cope with your boss and you can't solve it? I want Egwana to talk about this. Are you out of place <laughs> if you can't cope with your boss and you can't solve it? Hmm, if you can't interesting. Cope with... <laughs> I, I was saying, if Egwana really to talk... yeah. Okay, sure. Okay, let me let... Thank you. Um, ju just maybe to add to what um, Joseph had said earlier on the previous one. Sometimes I think that, I mean, so I've been in the healthcare space and sometimes there are people who are hard to reach, difficult to reach for 
some for, you know, for different reasons. One of the things I found works very well is being able to find someone who gets to this person and then use them as a means to meet with this person. So um, sort of like leveraging relationships. That's when I'll probably add to the timing as well, because I, I also agree that timing is critical. Now, are you not out of place? Um, the truth is, I mean, we're all humans, like um, Joseph had also mentioned. And for me, I've always considered the fact that my boss is my first customer. So customer is king, but customer is not always right. So coming from that point, I know that I need to sit and say, what does my boss want to achieve? So there's, there needs to be deliberateness to supporting your boss to achieve what they want to achieve. But of course, you first must understand what they really want to achieve so that you can then support them and then make it clear to them that I'm willing to do what needs to be done to help you to get to where you want to get to. Once they start to see that you're on the same page, it makes their guards to come down a little bit more. And But I, I think that, yes, you need to be deliberate to really work with your boss. But there are times where you get to the end of yourself and you know, you probably no longer align vision, values, and the likes. And then maybe at that point, you need to, you know, have a rethink as to what to do next. Exactly. Uh, well, and I would add to that. But point when you reach at a point where you know that you know, this is this relationship is broken. Mutual trust is broken. Exit. I would say I have done that in the past where I can say, you know what? I can no longer take this. Our, our values are misaligned. I don't want to act who I am not. This is mm. who I am. And I'm going to take this and start looking or start or quit. You know, <laughs> be bold enough. I know that most of uh, people on the call would say, I'm thinking about my bills and so on, but always always ensure that when you get to the end of the road you know uh find an alternative thank you so much i see many questions still here um but if oh and more questions are coming in but i'm going to pick one more from one of our bosses as well from annette nice who is the ceo of business school netherlands he says how often do you think a boss realizes that he or she is the problem uh, and how do you know that as a as, as a boss you are the problem um <clears throat> joseph i'd like one minute just a, a quick response joseph just one line yes. from you because we're about to close yes sure so number one as a boss how to know that you have problems when you're going back in circles you know you're the one who's apologizing every time uh you're the one who's always giving excuses you know you're the one who's stupid or uh, you're the one who's losing it often time. You're the one who's often time feeling bad. Like, why, why did I say that? Why did I? So you, 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 you really have to know that you, 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 you're not getting the art right. Second is you also need to find a way to be getting feedback from your team. You know, like even a feed smack. If I tell my team, if something is not going wrong, come and tell me to my very face, you know, like, like almost getting a smack, don't sugarcoat, don't do anything, just say it. Say it the way you're feeling it. Mm -hmm. And you do that, in most cases, you find that you're building a very solid relationship where you're free to almost say almost anything to, uh, to, 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 to them and they can say something to you, but of course in a respectful way. Thank you very much, Joseph. And indeed, our time is up. Uh, we we have just just before we go, I see that there's, there's still a few more questions in here. Um, just one more question, if you can just give me one minute, a quick, quick one minute response. Are victims capable to stand up for themselves against a toxic boss? Can victims <laughs> stand up for themselves against a toxic boss? Yes, the answer is yes. Victims can stand up for themselves and be able to defend themselves. But they have to get their heart right and their head clear and they have to be bored. There comes a time when you have to be bored. If you cannot be bored, seek help. You know, seek some, to somebody you can trust, uh, somebody you can confide in and make sure that you prepare yourself and that, you know, you're very clear and you're focusing on the results that you want. So victims, yes, can stand up on themselves and they can they can make it happen. Thank you very much, Joseph. I appreciate it. We have other questions which I'm going to send to you and we'll appreciate your responses. And we will, of course, post these on our website. So please, and our, our, our 
uh, YouTube page as well, where we have these recordings uh, posted. And next week we shall discuss, don't push me, the impact of the subconscious <laughs> brain <laughs> with Heineke, Hertogs, and Martin Asla. <laughs>